Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode and in this episode I will cover the topic Unix on Vex. This is a topic uh, that seems to interest a lot of people because there are a lot of comments, especially on NetBSD. In general, I'm not very deep in the topic uh, Unix or Linux because I'm not um, a daily Linux or Unix user. I've covered this topic only in university uh, in some courses and um, used some asterisks, but that's everything I know about um, Linux or Unix. But um, I think um, I can show you um, other operating systems than VMS on VEX. And in general, there are two uh, Unix distributions. The first one is Ultrix, this is made by uh, Digital themselves, and the other one is NetBSD. The problem with Ultrix is that um, this uh, VEX station 4000 VLC does not support Ultrix. Um, and um, my other VEX station, the VEX station 2000 that supports Ultrix, do not have a SCSI um, connector. Because um, I want um, to install it on this device, this is uh, Blue SCSI with Centronics, it works perfectly. Um, I recommend some videos from Digital Diggings who tested a lot of uh, these devices like Blue SCSI or other ones where you can use an SD card instead of a normal uh, SCSI hard drive. Um, and I saw uh, 50 pin SCSI hard drives are quite expensive now and therefore this is a more, much cheaper solution to test something and uh, I can change the SD card and install another US. I've installed also VMS on SD card, it works uh, perfectly. To install Ultrix I need um, another machine, uh, maybe a VEX station 3100 or something like that, but at the moment I do not have uh, that kind of VEX station, therefore um, I will make only the NetBSD video first and sometimes maybe in the future I will uh, make a video on Ultrix. And I will use a VEX station because um, Ultrix has a graphical user interface like VMS and so I can show you the graphical user interface of Ultrix. There are some limitations on NetBSD. Uh, first one is also the, user inter um, the graphical user interface because um, uh, I did not find uh, any workstation which supports um, the graphic cards which is installed in the workstation. Therefore, um, I can use NetBSD only in console mode. Interestingly, the implementation of the CPU of NetBSD is made by a guy I've got this keyboard from and also my old text documentation, also a printer from digital. Some names you um, see uh, frequently in uh, people who are interested in uh, digital uh, VEX machines. Now you will see the installation process of uh, NetBSD on that machine. In reality it's already installed because I've recorded the installation process before and it's installed on that SD card now. Um, but uh, I need to install NetBSD three times. The first time it uh, took longer than I expected. The second time I made a mistake while partitioning the hard drive and the third time uh, worked. And after that I will play around a bit with NetBSD and show you what you can do NetBSD, the NetBSD users um, of my viewers are more deep in NetBSD so they knew much more um, about NetBSD than I do but um, maybe I can show you uh, a few things on NetBSD on VEX. So now we are in the machine and first we want to see the devices of Blue SCSI and we enter show device to get a list of all devices. First the hard disk in the machine will start, but we won't use the hard disk, we will use only the blue SCSI devices and the blue SCSI devices are DKA100 and DKA300. DKA100 is the hard drive or the hard drive image on the blue SCSI disk and DKA300 is the installation ISO you can download from the NetBSD website for WAX. And now uh, it starts NetBSD from that CD image. Interestingly, uh, this MSE uh, prints out that it uh, finds no keyboard, but uh, the keyboard of the VEX station 4000 VLC works fine. Uh, maybe uh, it thinks it has no keyboard for the console, maybe it's a hardware issue, I don't know. But uh, the, uh, this message uh, can be ignored. And after that, the starting process proceeds. The whole starting process takes a while, so I will uh, fast forward in some parts. No, um, I have to enter the terminal type. Um, the default terminal is uh, VT220 and uh, hit enter and I say it's VT1220. 
now we have a selection about the language and I said I want the message in English and um, the next screen asks what I want to do and I want to install NetBSD on the machine and there's a warning message uh, what happens and I will enter yes. Next uh, it will be asked um, to the disk uh, which disk will use and then I will ask um, about the partitions of the disk. Then I did some partition things, I uh, did the uh, manual partition because in the installation uh, I've tried before there was a problem with the partition and now we can see the partition and the size of the two partitions is only two ones, the root partition and the swap partition. And um, i leave the root partition as it is, but I will change the size of the swap partition. You can see the size here, it's written in a sectors and a sector size is uh, 512 byte, so half a kilobyte and uh, it's about a 16 uh, megabyte of swap and it's a bit too low I think, so I've nearly doubled it to a bit uh, near to uh, 32 megabyte. I think that will be enough for that machine to have a swap space. So then we can we get a summary of the partition that will be done by the system. And if we choose OK, then it will good, confirm it. We will partition the hard drive. Now the partition is finished and also the creation of uh, the different versions and file systems. And um, I have selected what I want to install. This is the basic configuration. I've added some games and some manuals. And I don't want to install X Windows or X11 because the graphic output does not work, so it will be console only. And then I'll ask for the source, uh, I'll use the CD, and after that um, the installer process will decompress all this stuff, and uh, this pr process takes a while. Now the extraction process is finished and I have to hit enter and then there will be some uh, post extraction things that have to be done. First one is to set the root password, I have to enter it twice. Then I have to enter some random stuff for decryption. Maybe that was a bit too long but uh, because we will see later. Some, th some things will take a lot of time when they start. Then we can change several settings. The first thing I uh, will change is the network or I'll configure the network. The 
so the system fetched several things about DHCP, but I wanted to configure it manually. So I'll enter the host name of that machine and also the IP address and netmask and standard gateway and stuff like that. So we'll use a Google DNS server as a standard. And after that, the network setting will be saved. Now we can change other settings. The next thing is the time zone, because UTC is not the right time zone. The right time zone is CET. But in general, it doesn't matter because the clock in that machine doesn't work properly. You can see um, the date and time is not correct. So in general, uh, it makes no difference to set the time zone to CET. So now I have activating SS, uh, SSHD, and that was a little mistake. We will see later uh, because the activation of SSHD, um, the machine takes forever for booting, and I have to quit it every time. But we will see it later in the first uh, booting process. And after that, the configuration is done, and the installation is done, and the I can um, reboot the machine. Then it tries to boot from the network card, that's wrong, so I have to hit the halt button. And after that I can specify another boot device, and now it's DKA100, um, which is the hard drive in the blue SCSI, where I have installed NetBSD, and we will see the NetBSD booting process. So now the system uh, started. Um, the problem uh, was that SSHD uh, takes forever, several hours, and did not start properly. Maybe it's an encryption problem, maybe the machine is too slow, I don't know what the issue was. But um, I can uh, abort it in the starting process, and after that the machine starts. And now I can log in with uh, root and the root password. Um, in general, the system seems to be quite slow. So you can see the lock-in process takes a while, it's slower than a VMS on the machine. So now we are in, and we have the console, and we can enter some commands. First one is top to see the CPU load or the machine load, and we can see some running processes, and here at the moment it's about 20% uh, idle and 80% load. But we can enter top again, to see the development because it's not uh, refreshing automatically, so we have to enter it again. And now we can see there are some background processes running and uh, it's only 4% uh, idle at the moment. But 
The intro card is uh, also running, so we can try to ping something and it will work. So we can ping Google and we get an answer. So the, the network connection is the network implementation of the network card and the connection is working perfectly. And uh, also we can see what the content of our current folder is not very interesting. So let's go to the root folder and you can see uh, there was there was another uh, character at, um, at the beginning because it's a German keyboard, um, but at the moment the uh, layout is set to English, and so uh, some keys are in a different place than on, a, on an English keyboard than on a German keyboard. So we set the root came in the root folder, and um, then I will go to games, and we can start games on the machine because I've installed it. And one game is War Games, but it's it doesn't matter what you enter, yes, no, if you write it wrong or right, everything. It's a uh, quiz every time with the same answer, like we know from the end of that film. But we cannot play the, warm, uh, the game uh, Global Thermonuclear War. I think that's the name in the English version. I've ever seen it in German, so I don't know. So, but there are some other games, Battlestar, for example. Uh, this is a text game, it's working. I don't know how to. Uh, how, how, what, what I have to enter, so I have, to, so I have quitted it. And there are also some other games, uh, like Tetris, for example, but that does not work because uh, the terminal type is Uno you know, and I think it's not able to uh, reload all the uh, stuff which you have to show in Tetris. So let's have a look um, again on the CPU load and we can see that there is a task which uh, takes a lot of load to generate the, man the manual pages. And um, if we kill that task and enter top again, then we have uh, over 90% idle and um, the CPU load is uh, not so high like before. So that's everything I know about Unix. So uh, I will end that now and uh, shut down the machine. Um, but uh, I hope you find that interesting and um, we'll see you in the next episode. The next episode uh, won't be about Unix because I don't know when this video will come. So it will be a VMS, VEX, whatever topic. And uh, leave uh, comments below and uh, thanks for watching.